This beautiful gem is a piece of ringwoodite crystal. Water missing for decades has been found 400 miles beneath the US. Some say it's 660 miles beneath the Earth's mantle. The water is neither liquid ice nor vapor. 400 miles beneath the United States, there appears to be enough water to fill all our oceans. Almost three times. Researchers found the first time we discovered, they discovered evidence of the water which exists as a fourth form, not a liquid, not ice, not vapor, but hydrogen and oxygen molecules trapped in a mineral called ringwoodite, found in the transition zone, sitting between the upper and lower mantles. This is reported in USA Today. Their findings following up discovery announced by water-rich samples of ringwoodite from the transition zone that was brought to the surface via a Brazilian volcano, New Scientist reports. Astonishing that a massive ocean has been discovered towards the Earth's core. A reservoir of water, three times the volume of all the oceans on Earth. Three times all the oceans on Earth has been discovered deep beneath the Earth's surface. The finding could help explain where Earth's seas came from. The water is hidden inside a blue rock called ringwoodite that lies 700 kilometers underground in the Earth's mantle, the layer of hot rock between Earth's surface and its core. The huge size of the reservoir throws new light on the origin of Earth's water. Some geologists think water arrived in comets, and as they struck the planet, they supplied the Earth with water. But the new discovery supports an alternative idea that the oceans gradually oozed out of the interior of the early Earth. Quote, it's good evidence the Earth's water came from within, end quote, says Stephen Jacobson of Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. The hidden water could also act as a buffer for the oceans on the surface, explaining why they have stayed the same size for millions of years. Pinging the planet. Jacobson's team used 2,000 seismometers to study the seismic waves generated by more than 500 earthquakes. These waves move throughout Earth's interior, including the Earth's core, and can be detected at the surface. Jacobson says they make the Earth ring like a bell for days afterwards. By measuring the speed of the waves at different depths, the team could figure out which types of rocks the waves were passing through. The water layer revealed itself because the waves slowed down, as it takes them longer to get through soggy rock than dry rock. He said, we should be grateful for this deep reservoir. Jacobson also worked out in advance what would happen to the waves if water containing ringwoodite was present. He grew ringwoodite in his lab and exposed samples of it to massive pressures and temperatures matching those at 700 kilometers down beneath the Earth's surface. And sure enough, they found signs of wet ringwoodite in the transition zone 700 kilometers down, which divides the upper and the lower regions of Earth's mantle. At that depth, the pressures and temperatures are just right to squeeze the water out of the ringwoodite. Quote, it's rock with water along the boundaries between the grains, almost as if they're sweating, says Jacobson. I, I would venture to say with my own comment here, comment here is that it's, this rock is some kind of a rocky sponge filled with water. Damp down there, he says. Jacobson's findings support a recent study by Graham Pearson of the University of, of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. Pearson studied a diamond from the transition zone that had been carried to the surface in a volcano. And he found that it contained water-bearing ringwoodite, the first strong evidence that there was lots of water in the transition zone. 
Peterson says, quote, since our initial report of hydrous ringwoodite, meaning ringwoodite with water in it, hydrous ringwoodite, we found another ringwoodite crystal also containing water, so the evidence is now very strong, end quote. So far, Jacobson only has evidence that the watery rock sits beneath the U.S. He now wants to find out if it wraps around the entire planet. Quote, we should be grateful for this deep reservoir, says Jacobson, and he adds, if it wasn't there, it would be on the surface of the earth and mountaintops would be the only land poking out. Now, looking at this wonderful image, I'm thinking of the geysers in Yellowstone that erupt every 20 minutes or so, like a clock. And of course, as everybody knows, those geysers spout out tremendous amounts of heated, superheated water every time. So where is all that water coming from? Somewhere from the Earth's interior, obviously. And I guess this is as good a time as uh, any to put in a diagram of the hollow Earth with the openings at the poles, the map of Agartha, and people claiming that there are ancient tunnels that lead from the Earth's surface towards the inner Earth. Uh, I don't know of anybody that's had the experience of going in there, but let's put that there for the sake of all inclusionness. Now, a lot of people, as we said, believe that water came to Earth by way of celestial bodies, such as comets, meteors, and asteroids. Scientists, however, have discovered this vast water tank that is 600,000 kilometers between the Earth's surface and the core of the Earth. So for a long time, the dominant theory about how water came to be on this Earth supposed that water was brought to Earth by icy comets that crashed onto the surface of the planet. Of course, they theorized that because they did not know that the Earth contained a vast ocean of water underneath the mantle. So that changes things now. However, in recent years, a competing has emerged that suggests that the Earth creates its own water. It's been suggested that the Earth's mantle contains a substance called ringwoodite. The ringwoodite is the mineral that contains a large quantity of water, as we said, as the mineral is pulled towards the center of the Earth's core, the gravitational pressure and the intense heat causes the release of this water. Some scientists suggest that this is the origin of all the water on the Earth, and by implication, all of the life that exists on Earth. This is all, of course, theory as to how life exists on Earth. The Word of God, of course, created life. Now a study by a team of scientists from the United States and Canada have found evidence that seems to validate that ringwoodite theory. The team studied vast quantities of data collected by a project called US Array that collects seismological data from various points across the United States. The data allowed the team to observe the vibration patterns in the Earth's mantle and core. And during these observations, they came across an anomaly which they believed to be a vast diamond-shaped chasm that is filled with water. It's estimated that the diamond lies approximately 600,000 kilometers beneath the surface of the Earth. Graham Pearson, who is one of the co-authors of this study, describes this mysterious enclave as a kind of water storage tank, albeit an unbelievably enormous one. Pearson says that his team estimate that it is large enough to contain all the water in all of the oceans on the surface of the Earth. This is a huge amount of water. It's big enough to contain, this enclave is big enough uh, as a storage tank to contain all of the water in all of the oceans on the surface of the Earth. This is a huge amount of water. Now bubbling under the Ringwoodite Reservoir, volcanoes cause geological activity on the Earth's surface, which may affect areas deep underground. Three times the amount of water found on Earth's oceans may be locked up in a mineral called ringwoodite found 606 kilometers, that's 400 miles beneath the Earth. Earth's water may have come from within, driven to the surface by geological activity, 
rather than being deposited by icy comets hitting the forming planet. So according to Peterson, this incredible discovery will help us to understand significantly more about how our dynamic planet functions. It also opens up a dozen of new research opportunities for scientists of various fields. They have to examine a lot of things that will answer a lot of questions that come up with this. It also opens up a dozen of new research opportunities. As we said, it's particularly likely that this vast amount of water could be the home of hundreds, if not thousands, of different species of creatures that have never been seen by human eyes. So it could be that life exists in this water. And maybe by this water coming out, I don't know, it, it replenishes life. I, it's, there, there's so many questions to be answered once they start researching this. The discovery also serves to underline how little we know about our planet and opens the possibility of the discovery of more fantastic surprises lying beneath our feet. Also, another video that we should look into, obviously there's questions concerning the expanding Earth theory. Earth is not stationary, it's expanding. At one point, all the continents were joined as if they were uh, one piece. Very small areas of water, like lakes and little rivers. And then all of a sudden it started expanding and expanding. Water started filling up the oceans and the continents, the, the, uh, the continental plates, the tectonic plates, which hold the continents, started splitting apart. And of course, the Earth is expanding and filling up with ocean water. So that's another thing we'll go into with another video. So this is, in conclusion, a huge discovery by studying rocks. They found the huge ocean underneath the Earth that's big enough to contain all of the oceans of the Earth on our planet. Simply amazing. And we know that we need water as a source of life. Therefore, do not believe people who say that we don't have enough water and we have water shortages. God has provided an ample amount of water for everybody.